Hello friends, welcome to the Picking Fruits channel. Today we are in the lab and we are going to be showcasing the Mushroom Valley Farms Complete Liquid Culture Kit. I will be showing you what comes in the box and I will also be making a tutorial and showing you how to use the contents in the box. So stay tuned for that. The first thing you will find in your box will be this colored postcard. On the back of the postcard you will find a detailed list of all of the items that come inside of the box. You will also find a QR code which will be backlinked to this video so that you can go back and watch the tutorial and make your own LC. The next thing that you will find inside of the box will be three pairs of nitro gloves. Same gloves that I am wearing. These gloves are nice because they are extremely durable. They are somewhat reusable and they are good for people with latex allergies. The next thing you will find inside of the box will be 10 sets of complete syringes with lure locks. So here are 10 lure locks. These lure locks will be used to cover your liquid culture uh, syringe so that your media is safe. Here are 10 lure locked 18 gauge needles and 10 12 mil lure lock syringes. All of these are sterile, except for the lure locks, but you can easily sanitize these. The next thing in your kit will be nutrients. You will find 10 grams of dextrose, 10 grams of light malt extract, and this amount of nutrient here will be enough for 2,000 milliliters of liquid culture. The next thing you will find in your kit will be two modified one quart wide mouth lids. They've been modified with silicone injection ports and they've also been modified with gas exchange filters. The next thing you will find in your kit will be wide mouth glass one quart mason jars. These jars are durable, reusable, and they can tolerate the heat of an autoclave to help you safely sterilize your liquid media. The next two items in your box will be these one inch magnetic stir bars. They have a bevel in the middle which allow them to spin freely inside of your mason jars. And last but not least you will find your magnetic stir plate. This magnetic stir plate has nice thick steel gauged casing on it. It has a temperature control knob with an on and off switch and it also has variable control for your RPM speed that will control how fast or how slow your magnetic stir bars spin inside of your mason jars. Alright friends, so now we're actually going to be making the liquid culture and one of the things that I really enjoy about this kit is that everything is in one place. So everything has already been sourced for you, all the hard work has already been done. You get the vessel, you get the nutrients, you get the syringes, you get the lure locks, you get the stir plate. The only things that you have to provide are water and a scale to measure your nutrients. Now if you don't have access to the kit or if you didn't buy the kit but you still wish to start your mushroom journey and make a liquid culture, you could definitely source all of these things separately. It will take some time and it will take some researching. But you want a glass vessel that will withstand high pressure and high temperatures because you do have to put this in an autoclave or a pressure cooker. If you need to source syringes, you can buy them online or you can go to a tractor supply or any kind of rural farm uh, supply store that will have uh, syringes and needles for livestock. And if you don't have access to dextrose or light malt extract, you could definitely use uh, sugar in the raw, which is uh, natural cane sugar, or you could use honey if you're not vegan. Okay, so the first step to making our liquid culture is going to be determining how much liquid media we're actually trying to create. Uh, for this instance, we're going to be making 500 milliliters of liquid culture. So to do that, we're going to start off with 500 milliliters of distilled water. And we're also going to be starting off with 5 grams of a 50-50 mix. We're going to use a single gram for every single 100 milliliters of water. So using our scale, we will make sure that our vessel is teared out and we're going to be measuring two and a half grams of each of our nutrients. 
So first I will add 2.5 grams of our dextrose. And if you don't know, dextrose is pretty much corn sugar that is somewhat isolated. Now if you go over on your nutrients, it's not really a big deal. And if you go under, it's also not a big deal all the same. But remember that you are trying to create an experiment here. So you want to be as accurate as possible. Because you want to recreate this whenever you're going to be making your liquid cultures. I'm going to tear out the scale and I'm going to be adding the other two and a half grams of light malt extract. And for those of you that don't know what light malt extract is, it's simply barley sugar that is frequently used in the beer brewing industry. Uh, the sugars in beer ferment into alcohol. And in this case, they are actually going to be allowing our mycelium to feed off of it. Okay, so we're really close, and I'll stop there. So now that we have our five grams of sugars, or nutrients, in our weighed out container, I'm gonna turn my scale off, and then I'm going to pour myself 500 milliliters of distilled water. Um, some of these vessels will or will not have milliliters marking on them, but if you're familiar with mason jars, we're just going to be filling it up to half because these quarts are a thousand milliliters. If you're using any other kind of vessel, make sure that you do the math and you figure out how many milliliters you need. Or you can simply weigh it out as well. You can weigh out your water by volume and that'll also tell you how much you actually have in your vessel. So now I'm going to be adding my nutrients and I'm going to seal these up and I'm going to be placing them on the stir bar on the stir plate, sorry so we don't need any kind of heat right now and we're slowly going to increase our RPMs until our stir bar has thoroughly mixed all of the nutrients inside of the liquid Now, depending on the temperature, depending on the heat, on the on the temperature of the water, um, you will find that the sugars clump up. If you feel that this could be an issue for you, you can start off with warm or hot water, and that will help you dissolve the sugars faster. Another thing you can do if you notice that your sugars aren't dissolving, you can turn up the temperature on your hot plate, and this will ensure that the water starts to warm up and your sugars start to dissolve. So if you can see here, um, we have a strong whirlpool going on inside of our mason jar and I don't see any sediment or any clumps of sugar anymore. So this has worked out fine and now if I pull it off you will see that we have a nice uh, yellowish tint to our water and this is ready for pressure cooking or autoclaving. Um, so I will not be showing you that process today, but you simply would have to cover this so that your filter does not get wet. And you want to pressure cook this or autoclave this so you can sterilize it for about 30 to 40 minutes at 240 degrees or 15 psi depending on your altitude. Uh, when sterilizing anything, make sure that you understand uh, the temperature ranges for your altitude in your region. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to inoculate your liquid culture. So let's pretend that this already came out of the autoclave and it's cool to the touch. You're going to need to have an inoculant. You can find liquid cultures or spores from various vendors all over the internet. Uh, you could also visit our website at pickingfruits.com and you can find a nice variety of inoculants there. Uh, in this case I'm only using water. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is after you've placed your needle onto your syringe is you're going to want to sterilize it. So the way that we're going to sterilize our needle is by taking a flame to it and getting it red hot. We're going to get it red hot for two seconds. At that point we're going to cut the flame and then we're going to cool it down with the liquid inside of the syringe. 
when working with an open flame, always be careful and vigilant of your surroundings. Please, I, hold my, I do not hold myself responsible for any kind of injuries or incidents that occur in your home lab, uh, but just be careful and be mindful. So if you're using alcohol, make sure there's al there is no alcohol wet around your table or on your hands and make sure you don't catch yourself on fire. Just be smart, guys. Uh, so here we go. So one, two, you see red hot, cut the flame. Always make sure that your flame is completely out before you set your instrument down. And then we're going to cool down the needle by dripping some of our inoculant out, okay? Now, we are going to be using a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to make sure that we have a clean surface to inject into our ship. So we're going to saturate our ship, and ship stands for self-healing injection port. Now we're going to take the needle and we're going to penetrate the ship through the middle, okay? So once your needle is in, you can see the needle through the glass, and we're going to sh squirt directly into the liquid culture, trying not to catch any of the sides or edges. Now, uh, as you can use as much liquid culture or as little liquid culture as you want. For this demonstration, I'm just going to use the whole thing. You definitely don't have to use so much. If you want to conserve your liquid culture for later use, you can definitely just use a single milliliter or two milliliters and store the rest for, for you know, other projects. Um, liquid culture store well in the refrigerator and they can last you years if stored properly. So now that the liquid culture has been uh, our, our liquid culture syringe or spores have been injected into our liquid culture vessel, you're going to want to set this at room temperature, preferably away from the sun, not necessarily in a dark place, but just away from the sun so that it doesn't get too hot. And in a matter of days, sometimes even hours, you're going to start seeing growth. And then at that point, when you start seeing growth, you're going to want to take your jar and place the, magnet, place the magnet on the magnetic stirrer and agitate it so that you are breaking up the mycelial mass that is growing within. And you're gonna to wanna to do this at least, for at least 10 to 20 minutes a day, every single day, until you feel that your liquid culture is ready to draw from a syringe. All right, so I found a liquid culture jar that is fully colonized and ready to draw from. Um, so here's an example of what happens when you do not mix your liquid cultures daily. Uh, I forgot about this one for a couple of weeks and I came back to it. It still looks fairly healthy. I have yet to conduct an experiment on it for sterility, but if you can see, it's really chunky in there and uh, you don't necessarily want that. You want your mycelium uh, liquid culture to look somewhat clear with debris inside of it, but not necessarily crazy chunks like this. Um, this is still healthy and I'm pretty sure it's still going to perform, but it's not ideal. So we are going to fast forward and pretend that it has been a week or so and we have a ton of mycelial mass inside of our jar. And now we're going to do the backward process of what we just did. So we're going to take an empty syringe, preferably a new one. You know, you're gonna to wanna to open it in a sterile environment. If you have a flow hood, make sure that you have clean hands, make sure that the whole setup is clean, uh, never touching the needle, because you don't ever want to introduce anything from outside into your container. Um, if you were to get anything dirty into this vessel, there is enough nutrients in there for mold or, or mildew or any kind of nasty cultures that you don't want to grow inside and they will completely devastate your growth. Uh, your mushroom mycelium is usually not strong enough to overtake any kind of mold growth until it has actually colonized and has actually networked out. Uh, so using a clean needle and syringe, I'm going to do the same thing. I am going to flame sterilize it for two seconds. And in this case, we have nothing inside of the syringe to actually cool down our needle. So we are going to wait a few more seconds until it is not red hot anymore. And we'll just count down from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 
three, two, one, and it should be cool enough at this point. Same thing, you're gonna take some isopropyl alcohol, you're going to spray your ship down, make sure that your hands don't come into contact with it after it has been sanitized, and then we're going to stick it in the same place, and we're going to tilt our jar back, making sure that we never actually get our filter wet, or we never have any liquid coming up to the ship, and we're going to draw our liquid and our mycelium into the syringe. And just that easy, you've made a liquid culture with your choice of mycelium in it for any kind of gourmet or any kind of experimental mushroom growing. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. If you like our content, please consider subscribing, like this channel, like the video, share it with your friends. And if you want to see something in the future, definitely drop us a comment and we can accommodate. I read those comments all the time and thank you for watching. Also a huge shout out to our friends over at Mushroom Valley Farms for providing us with this extremely useful liquid culture kit. If you would like to check them out, you can find them at mushroomvalleyfarms.com or you can find them at etsy.com forward slash mushroomvalleyfarms. Thank you. A whirlpool rather going on inside of our mason jar and I don't see any solid chunks. <laughs> Athena! Hey! Athena! Cosmo! Athena and Cosmo! No! Hey! No barking at me! Okay. Now you want to be careful but not too careful. Um, a little bit extra won't hurt anything and a little bit less won't hurt anything all the same. But always try to be accurate because at the end of the day you are conducting science experiments. Whoa. Oh. It's because the can I can't <laughs> with the camera. Sorry. You want to redo that? Yeah. Another thing. You, uh, 